Hi, my name is Ashley and I'm a mom of one 21 month old toddler and I'm currently 28 weeks pregnant with baby number two. I know a lot of parents out there are really hesitant to give their toddlers art supplies. Most often the fear is where those art supplies are going to end up. Obviously you don't want them on your walls or your floor or your furniture or any place they're not supposed to be. But the good news is with a little bit of supervision and teaching your child how to take care of their art supplies, that won't be a problem. So from one busy parent to another, today I'm gonna to share with you all about art supplies for toddlers in your Montessori home. I know when I first started doing this, I was constantly wondering when would my child be ready for art supplies? I think most parents are worried that their child is too young, but honestly, if they can handle and physically manipulate the supplies without eating them, then they're probably ready. And even then, if putting things in their mouth is still a problem, that's something that you can work through. Toddlers are very creative. They love to use their hands. And what better way to support their growing imaginations than providing them with some open-ended art supplies that they can use to make creative creations of their own. Now there are an endless variety of art supplies that you could choose from, but the key here is going to be keeping it simple, especially for younger toddlers who are just starting out. So what kinds of art supplies should you start off with? This is my daughter's art cart. It's one of those three tier cart systems that she's just tall enough to reach the top level for really good for storing art supplies at their level. Obviously some really easy supplies to start off with would be some simple crayons, colored pencils, and some markers. I do think it's worth noting that the crayons and the markers that I give my toddler are this Crayola ultra clean washable style kind because if they do happen to put them in places they're not supposed to be, they literally wipe right off. So these are really handy to have. Also the crayons are these jumbo style crayons. I believe you can also find some that are egg shaped, but I really wanted her to start developing her writing grip. So I wanted to provide her with regular crayons. Obviously crayons do break over time. So that's something you have to think about. And my toddler also has an odd fascination with peeling the paper off of all of them. So none of them have their labels all the time, but that's just the way toddlers are. Another art supply you can use even with the youngest toddlers is watercolor paint. It is a little bit on the messier side, so definitely something you would wanna supervise with, but when possible, do try to provide them with real art supplies. This is an actual paintbrush. You can also buy chunkier ones at the dollar store for super cheap. I also do provide her with a small mason jar filled with just a tiny little bit of water for her to clean up after she is done, and a small sponge that's been cut down to her size for her to help clean up and wipe off the tabletop. Speaking of cleaning up, you might also want to provide them with a small basket that they have easy access to filled with little washcloths and rags that you don't mind them getting dirty that they can use for wiping up anything that they've made a mess with. Another great art supply that my toddler absolutely loves are stamps. I've just provided her with this small little bin of different animals and creatures. I do believe Melissa and Doug makes a huge set of wooden ones as well, although these ones I purchased from Michaels and they're just simple little foam and rubber stamps because she has been known to pull out this tray and start playing with them when I'm not around. I do have to keep the ink up here where it's just slightly out of her reach still. You don't wanna provide them with too many choices. I actually right now only allow her to do the stamping with either silver or gold. I just found these in the Target dollar spot. I do have two other ones, but as you can see, they're unopened and she's never used these ones and I'm saving them for when these inevitably dry out. Two colors are more than enough choices for a small toddler. Another tried and true favorite that my daughter pulls out almost every day are stickers. This is one that you wanna make sure you supervise at the table and enforce that rule or else stickers will end up all over your floor and your furniture and your walls and all the places you don't want them. Young toddlers don't really know what to do with the stickers, but it's excellent fine motor practice for them to have to learn how to peel the pages and get these little stickers off. Typically, I just give her a piece of paper and I let her peel them off and stick them to the paper and she has more than enough fun with that. Obviously, as they get older, then they can start doing more creative things with their stickers. But in the beginning, it's all about the act of stickering itself. And if you get a really giant book like this for super cheap at a craft store, then you don't have to worry about them wasting the stickers because as you can see, they will last forever. As far as paper goes for all of their coloring and painting and stickering, it doesn't need to be anything fancy, just a simple pad filled with paper that can be torn out. I've also seen some people choose to do a spiral notebook so that everything stays in one book, but that's entirely up to you. As you can see, I have some of my daughter's artwork that she's currently working on right now down there with the blank paper. And finally, the one that I think scares parents the most, parents that say they don't introduce their child to Play-Doh until they're much older, but 
honestly, this is the best. Play-Doh is excellent practice for fine motor skills and for their budding creativity. Even my 21 month old likes to create things out of Play-Doh that she tells me are dogs and cats and sometimes even me and my husband. She creates body parts like noses and eyes and hair. And this is honestly one of the things that I see her being the most creative with right now. Yes, Play-Doh requires a little bit of supervision to make sure they're not eating it. But once they understand that concept, it's actually not that bad. And if you enforce the idea that they need to stay at a table like this one, anytime they're working on art supplies, it really cuts down on the mess that you might be worried about happening. Obviously you want a surface that's really, really easy to wipe clean and that you don't mind getting dirty if it should happen to get a little stain on it like this one. As long as you're consistent with it and you don't allow them to wander over into their play area, for the most part, they are more than happy to sit at the table and work on their projects. Oftentimes I will sit right here in this chair with my daughter while she sits in that one. All of these supplies are really easy to find at places like Walmart, Target, even the dollar store, your local craft store, but I will leave some links down below for you guys in case you would like some ideas. Obviously you do want to have a lot of supervision in the beginning, especially with things that they can put into their mouths like Play-Doh. But as your child becomes accustomed to the idea that they're not allowed to eat these types of materials, the stress will become less for you and you'll be able to start introducing them to a bigger variety of things. Some things that I have on my wish list for my daughter for the upcoming future include things like kinetic sand, modeling clay, oil pastels, and an actual easel with spill-proof paint cups. The biggest takeaway though that I would like for you guys to get from this video, and honestly it's the hardest thing to do when you first start, is to really try to take on the role of observer when your child is working with art supplies. Resist the urge to comment and praise your child for whatever they're working on. For many parents, that's really tough to do. You're going to be so excited seeing your child work with these art supplies that you're going to want to jump in and say, hey, great job, good work. I really like that. But by making comments like that, you're actually squashing your child's inherent creativity. You'll notice over time that they're creating less for themselves and for their own pleasure and more to receive feedback from you. And that's not what you want. You want your child to learn how to be creative for creativity's sake, not to make you happy. So when you're first learning to resist those urges, the best of advice that I can give you is to try sports casting instead. What that means is saying what you see your child doing. It kind of helps fill that gap where you feel like you need to say something. So for example, if your child is working on a small animal made out of Play-Doh, instead of saying, hey, that's a really nice doggy, I like that, or you're doing such a good job, you could say something like, I see you're building a dog. This also works if your child shows something to you, kind of like, hey, look what I made. You don't have to say, great job, honey. You can just say, you made a dog. Again, this is really hard to learn to do at first because I think so many of us were raised on this whole idea of being praised every time we did a good job. But once you really fall into this pattern of sports casting instead, it does become second nature. You might slip up every once in a while, but that's okay. Just recognize that you did and move on. If you liked today's video, then please be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel because this video is part of a larger series called Montessori at Home aimed at providing practical tips for busy parents like you and I for implementing Montessori philosophies in your home with your child. And be sure to stay tuned next week when I share with you some really easy DIY Montessori inspired activities that you can create for your babies and toddlers at home. Thanks for watching.